In 2015, political parties said a lot. I mean, in a process of speaking people's, uh, seeking people's support, they traveled around the country just to convince prospective voters that a vote for them will not go to waste. Apparently, the All Progressive Congress and its candidate, President Muhammad Buhari, were more convincing, which is why they won. So here is a highlight of the APC campaign promises in the 2015 general election campaign. Our main problem is a vicious circle of insecurity, lack of job, and corruption. The APC is determined to break this vicious circle. The government of APC will attack head-on the security and the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General Mohamedou Okechuku Buhari. We made the undertaking that the APCC government will make sure that Boko Haram within a few minutes will be a thing of the past. We will try and improve employment. Employment so that the youth, the able bodies, can get jobs. APC promised you in our manifesto sound education and free for that matter. We will even feed the child and the school one meal a day. Those are some of the popular sound bites you find on television at a time. But three years down the line, critics of the APC-led administration say the president has not lived up to expectation in the delivery of his campaign promises. The APC said they have. We'll be showing you details of the party's scorecard. Now, uh, some of the promises and fulfillments are at equilibrium. Or will one outweigh the other? is a reality on ground far from the figures. Let's show you some of the promises at a time made by the APC, some of which were popular and the party went to town with. If you look at it, they said they were going to create a phased social insurance scheme to assist certain groups in the population with social welfare payments through a phased program, starting with young people under 30 and the unemployed, senior citizens over 70, the disabled and armed service veterans. They also promised that they were going to provide a free daily school meal for all children attending primary school. They also said, they promised at the time, three million new jobs a year. They also said they were going to guarantee free education, employ at least an extra 100,000 police officers, provide interest-free loans for university, technical school students who meet the required entry qualifications, direct conditional monthly school, social security payment for 25 million of the poorest Nigerians. Those are some of the promises made. There are numerous. Uh, some were made in the blueprints pre, uh, provided by the party at the time. Some were made on the podium during the campaign. Well, the party and the government of the day in the last few days had released uh, almost a 40-page document. Uh, they call it the Three Years uh, Administration's Performance Fact Sheet, which was provided by the presidency. And in all of these, they highlighted several achievements of the government in the last three years, some of which we will touch on in the course of the program tonight. And that are being put on the uh, stop headings of economy, security, and anti-corruption. Let's get to the conversation tonight, everyone. Joining me from our Buja studio tonight on the program is a senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari, Mr. Garba Shewu. And side by side with him is a spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Kola Ologbondion. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time on the program. Let's begin with you, Mr. Garba Shewu. 
Looking back at the campaign promises of uh, the APC and the Buhari uh, government, in direct comparison to of the administration's performance and achievement, would you say that the government had lived up to the bidding? Oh, absolutely, yes, because uh, you have just uh, picked a few points from the scorecard which we which we handed out, depending on what you are talking about. You know, the president spoke as a candidate in, in these clips not less than three times on the issue of corruption, on, on the issue of uh, security. As we speak today, you can see that in the Niger Delta, following, you know, engagement with the communities and uh, ramped up infrastructure development, including, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, concessions given to communities. Calm has returned and oil activity has fully gone up. And uh, we are on 2.2 million barrels per day now. We are targeting 2.5 million. In the Northeast, you know, nearly all the secondary schools have been reopened. The airport in Meduguri has been reopened. The roads mostly have virtually opened up to traffic. And, and more than one million internally displaced persons have been returned you know, to their homes. In fact, in December last year, the Christian Association of Nigeria said they had the safest Christmas you know, for quite some time in Meduguri in you know, December last year. So normalcy is going back you know, to, to those uh, communities. In, on, on matters of the economy, you've seen how much we have done, given what we have inherited, and the fact that today, the economy is back on the path of growth. And huge foreign capital is coming into Nigeria. Huge savings are being made, you know, in our external reserves. The ease of doing business in the country has changed so many things. And matters of corruption, you know, I guess uh, last week was a high point uh, in, the, in, the, in the war against corruption in the country, given a very high level conviction which was achieved. A case that had gone on for 11 years, unbroken 11 years. We are beginning to get somewhere as far as these matters are concerned. So on the overall, I think that we have done very well. Have we satisfied 100% of everyone? Uh, there, there will always be some people who would say they are not. We are inter they are entitled to their own points of view. One of those people who will be judging you tonight, based on what you promise uh, and what you're doing right now, is not only Nigerians, it's going to be the opposition, especially the, the main opposition party in Nigeria, PDP, uh, the party that you, you chased out of power at the center in 2015. And the spokesperson there, Mr. Kalolo if I may quickly ask for your reaction. If you look at the promises, because you will actually judge a political party by the promises promises they make, some of the highlights of the campaign promises of this administration, if you look at some of those things, if you take them one after the other, and you tick the box one after the other on what they have done, madly, if you are going to uh, criticize or talk about this government, how would you assess this government? Thank you very much, Jim. Well, I listened to Malam Tabashio attentively. And I'm amazed that he did not bring forth the contents of his 41 page achievement in the course of discussion. But for us in the People's Democratic Party, we believe that the government of President Muhammad Buhari has failed dismally on the promises it made. To Nigerians. First, during their campaign, they promised APC as a party and its presidential candidate then, now President Muhammad Buhari, promised to improve on the economy. They promised to fight corruption. They also promised that in improving the economy, one, they were going to ensure 
that our exchange rate move from 186 naira to a dollar to 40 naira to a dollar. But today, before, shortly before now, dollar went as high as 500 naira. Now it has come down to 386 naira compared to 186. They also made a promise that PMS, that's petrol, which majority of Nigerians use, was not supposed to be sold at 86 naira, 87 naira 50 kobo, but ought to have been sold at 40 naira. Today, a liter of petrol, a liter of PMS, is 145 naira, where you can buy directly from an NPC. In some states, it goes as high as 180 naira. That's in the area of the economy. And when you look at the staple food, the things that we consume, the prices have gone up. Purchasing power has gone so low that most Nigerians cannot even pay rent. And if you look at the indices under the PDP, where classroom teachers could afford loans we build houses, <laughs> we buy cars. We don't have such a situation today in Nigeria.